it would be like a fear. Like you'd be sat there listening to like one of your favorite cassettes and then it would kind of like, <laughs> and you'd be like, no. And you'd like rush over and you'd take it out and you'd be like, oh, okay, this is fixable. You can do this, you know? when I was younger. Um, I had this cassette recorder thing. It had like a microphone on it so you could record yourself and it came with this yellow tape. One side was like classical music and then the other side was like blank so you could record over the blank side and I still have it. Still has like recordings I made when I was like three years old of my dad reading me like stories and me being like, don't do that voice dad. <laughs> That's actually proof that I've been obsessed with tapes since the age of three. <laughs> I didn't really have that many friends to walk to school with, so what I used to do was record Mary Ann Hobbs' rock show on Radio 1 on like a Tuesday night and just like record all the songs onto like a 90-minute cassette and then just listen to that for the duration of the week. Yeah, these are our first ten releases. Ten tapes from ZZ Def Rays to Thumpers. I'm Brian Shimkovitz. I do the Project Awesome Tapes from Africa, and I'm here in New Quay, Southwest England. I first traveled to Ghana, West Africa in 2002. I was studying music. I was interested in popular music in the city. And I got into the hip hop scene there. And while traveling around, you know, you're hearing music everywhere, like in the radio and stuff like that. So I was always asking people where I could find this music, and at that time, it was mostly tapes that were available. One of the things I noticed right away, the tape itself has a certain kind of warmth and a certain type of clarity that's different from the CD or the MP3 or uh, LPs is, is really nice. I went back and stayed for a year, and then I moved to New York with all these tapes and boxes, like hundreds and hundreds of tapes. It was literally just one day in my apartment in Williamsburg, I was like, I'm gonna start a blog called Awesome Tapes from Africa. And I was like, I don't want to select stuff. I, I just want to like put the entire recording up there because it's really interesting and I've never heard music like this and I'm pretty sure people can't find it very easily. I was just doing it for myself and like for maybe a few nerdy friends that would be into it. But after a while I realized that it was serving a purpose for people who were interested either casually or deeply in African music, but sometimes it's good to have direction. We are at the Lexington in London and we're here because Transgressive have their label offices and uh, I run Kissability with the guys who run Transgressive. Tapes are just so easy to do, so cheap to do compared to vinyl, but they still have like nostalgia attached to them. You can buy them blank and you can dub them yourselves. You can do a run of like 25, you can do a run of 50. Like it's so easy to do and so exciting to do as well. I think there's a lot of people who may not have grown up with cassette tapes who actually have cassette labels now. One out of 50. There you go. There's definitely a resurgence on cassettes in the minute. People buy them as merch more often than in any other format because it's quite easy for people to just pick up a cassette which costs a few quid at a gig. If you're a normal person, you're kind of just like, they still make cassettes. It doesn't sound great. But I feel like there's a certain charm and a certain quality. Yeah, that's reeks of effort. <laughs> I'm lucky to be here because I like how, you know, Awesome Tapes from Africa can kind of fit into a bunch of different types of events. This is kind of unique because I think I'm the only person here playing music like this. Some chill jams, Guinea, Nigeria. <laughs> 
When I think of the tape, it's such a brilliant design, and you can fit it in your pocket. You know, I was recently in Eindhoven, which is where the man who invented the modern audio cassette is from. I didn't get a chance to meet him, but I want to go back there and meet this guy, because this is a simple, but also kind of complicated, little machine. Oh, <laughs> 